Okay, so let me just take a minute and post that we are live. And I, ooh, I'm really excited about this game. So I honestly am challenging myself to finish it during the stream. Uh, I did get distracted a few times here and there uh, while I was working on it. And I was like, well, I was trying not to work on it, TBH. I was like, okay, let me work on this live on the stream. And then I got distracted for, as I can see, 10 minutes longer than I wanted to. Hi, hello. Twitch.tv slash cutest patoot. So yes, so today you are not seeing my cute little face, or at least not right now. Later today you will, because I actually had a stream planned uh, already today. Um, that was also going to be about game design. So depending on how long this takes, I'll either pop that on towards the end or take a break and come back later. But yes, we are live and I am working on current working title is stuck in space and honestly what i got distracted on was making this and this shit made me giggle really hard um <clears throat> i just center that um so the wonderful at alicia kills um michelle is very very nice and um was able to help me get canva pro so a lot of stuff's gonna get really pretty really really fast um i did have serious like little like game game book things and then I had this idea and um I can't put that um in there because I'll get sued but I'll figure something out with it because it is it just it did made me it did made me laugh it did make me laugh okay let me sorry it's bugging me that that is uh not okay anyway before you make the game book you tend to need to make the game Meg! Hi, hello! Welcome, welcome. I'm working on game design today. Uh, I was listening to a podcast. I was listening to Why Won't You Date Me by Nicole Byer, who I adore and honestly um, host goals. Big inspiration to me. And she was talking to uh, Darcy Carden, I think is her name. Let me, oh, let me look that up. Let me look that up before... Yeah, Darcy Carden from uh, The Good Place. Hi, hi, welcome. Right? And so I was listening to the podcast, and they, they've been working together for, like, it feels like a decade or something. They've known each other, and they were just, like, joking around, and they said, like, hey, wouldn't it be fun to have, like, a TV show with, like, normal people in space? And I was like, hold my beer, except I don't drink. So I was like, hold my water bottle. And then I started um, word vomiting this. So they were like, what if you're in space and, like, the guy who knows the things just dies. And I was like, that would be really, really fun as a game. So I started writing this. Um, so current premise, in the year 3022. And the reason that I said it there is because when I was doing pre-gens, because I'm doing pre-gens instead of a character creator. So it's a little bit of a different thing that I'll dive into like more deeply on like one versus the other in a different stream. But for this one, I was like, let me make pre-gens. And then I was like, oh, why 2K body? <gasps> oh, why 3K body? And then I decided to set this in the year 3022 because I am a Y2K baddie. And if we set this in a thousand years, I'm sure there's going to be some bitch just like me. Um, so that's why the setting is in the year 3022. Um, so in the year 3022, space vacations are seeing a bit of a downtrend in traffic. People wonder if it's worth the money. Some say it's all a big conspiracy. Some say since there's no alien planets involved, there's no point, which like valid. And it's become a bit gauche for the rich and powerful to go to space because like anybody can go. But travel agencies persist, as humans and their ideas always have, and that is how you end up here. So the players are regular people who sign on for a space vacation. And it, I said, like, three to five, I think, is a sweet spot for this game. Um, I'm trying to design it to be able to be played as one-shots or as, like, episodic campaigns, kind of like a sitcom where, like, nothing has any necessarily, like, long-term bearing on the campaign. You can just keep playing with the same characters as you are in space for as long as you'd like. Um, that's how I want to structure this anyway. So that's kind of what I'm keeping in mind. So I got the premise. So now what comes next after the premise is, um, well, simultaneous, actually. Simultaneous uh, settings and mechanics because they play into each other a lot. Um, so basically the premise is you guys signed up for this vacation or you're going on this vacation. You're in this pod. You're in space. And the astronaut guide uh, accidentally fucking leaves you there. Like straight up, I had like, so in the podcast they were like, what if he dies? And I was like, Let's make this lighthearted. 
went to the escape pod to check something. Maybe something got hit. Like maybe it was an asteroid. Maybe they hit a button. I don't care. But they got disconnected and they are hurtling away from you. Um, have no way to help you. They will not be back in Earth anytime soon. Like you don't even know exactly if like they're going to be able to pilot there or not. And like they might not be able to like know where exactly you are. Um, maybe if it's because I got hit by a stray asteroid, I was like, okay, so the comms are down. So you cannot communicate with the astronaut. You cannot communicate with Earth. You are stuck in this fucking spaceship. But in a way to not make it scary, because that would be scary, um, I made sure all the pre-gens are very silly and very funny. Um, so basically, you don't know how to operate the spaceship. Nobody knows how to operate the spaceship. Um, nobody's expecting you back for ages. So you can, you know, try to find your own way home or continue the vacation because it was fucking expensive. So uh, you choose your comfort level. I've already decided that. And the comfort level will be this. It's these three. Because I'm not going to kill myself making six for this micro RPG. So I made three. Economy, Economy Plus, and Luxury Liner. So that'll determine the settings slash supplies that you guys have. And then potentially I might use these also euphemistically for like the campaign length. So like one shot uh, mini series long going ca- ongoing campaign. Um... So I need to write that out. Let me let me actually write that down before I forget what I had assigned to those. All right, and then those will all come with their own like extra things, like maybe NPCs or something. And then I was working on pre-gens. Let me make this bigger. So I have all my headings at like 15. So this is just going to be the plain text document. Bitch. (laughs) And uh, then I will make the pretty, pretty book here. That shit makes me laugh. Oh, fuck. Hi, hello, everybody. Y2K means the year 2000. So year 2000. Y2K. Hi, Lamia. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. So yes, we are working on new game. Very excited. So yeah, Y2K is like what people back in 1999 called like the year 2000. So like now the aesthetic of like the 2000s of like the turn of the century is called Y2K. So whenever you hear me say like, for example, like what was it last week? I have no concept of time when I was talking about a Hawks cosplay, but I was like Y2K, baddie Hawks play, uh, Hawks cosplay. I, my personal style would be if I'm being very nice to myself, um, (laughs) described as Y2K baddie, um, because I wear almost exclusively low-rise jeans if I can get away with it. When I see them, I grab them and buy them immediately. Um, and, like, a bunch of, like, the, the tops and the crop tops and the fuzzy stuff from, like, back in the day. Back in the day when I was five. Aging is, aging and times changing was not going to stop me from living my best like y2k baddie life when i grew up i spent my entire childhood wanting to be wanting to look like paris hilton i am not giving up on that dream now um so i was creating some pre-gens i think this might be enough to start off with and like the cool thing is like with all my games i tell people all the time i don't give a fuck what you do with my game play it just have fun if you decide like you have an idea for a character cool i don't care go ahead um i'm happy to see people be creative with something that I made so I'm gonna (laughs) let's see actually GK baddie um we're gonna bullet point bullet point bullet point so I'm still trying to think of the mechanics of the game I think that might come after I create like Let's let's expand on the settings. So economy, which means exactly what? Let's see. I think that means hmm, in game time. So one shots. So that means like within this game, you will like find a way to get home. Let's see. <laughs>
actually. Let me get rid of you. This is, by the way, not the end text that'll be in the book. This is what it looks like when I word vomit onto a page. Hi, welcome. So um, for anybody just joining us now, uh, I was inspired by something I heard on a podcast today. And before I knew it, we were here. Um, so currently, I am writing the outline for the game. We've got the premise. We've got some pre-gens. I'll be adding more. Because I did say, like, three to five players. Which reminds me... That up here, I need a gameplay overview so that I can keep track of everything. Three to five players. I'd say no GM. No GM. So you need three to five players. Let's get you up to 13. Oh, hello. Let me see. Yep. All right, no gym. All right, we'll figure out what dice after I design these three settings because that will inform the mechanics. Also, if you guys have questions, you can absolutely ask questions. And then after we finish uh, this part of things, I will transfer it to this. Do I keep going back and forth because this makes me giggle and looking at it makes me happy? Yeah, probably. Um, let me not... Let me, let me not get sued. <clears throat> anyway, also, I didn't mean for it to look like Star Wars' text. Um, I, I just had to make it smaller because it was very much that phenomenon of, like, writing happy birthday on a cake where, like, <laughs> I ran out of room towards the bottom. <laughs> so I made it smaller. And then it ended up looking like Star Wars. And you know what? I'll take it. Oh, okay. Hi, hi, hi. Nice. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, keeping track of people's handles is very difficult for my brain. Um, so, yes, good to know. Hi, welcome. I hope you'll have fun on the stream. Um, that shit is it's probably not even that funny. I just really like it. Um, plus, I, I really like writing comedy stuff. So I love writing horror, and I love working in horror. As squeamish as I can get. A lot of my friends, like, I just watched The Witcher with a friend of mine. And they were like, they really thought like, I don't like horror because every time something gory happened, I gagged or like every time something scary happened, I got like spooked. But like, I, I like it. I, I like that feeling. I, cause it's controlled. It's like with many horror fans that like are extremely squeamish. Like I really love it. And I will describe things in gory detail when I am jamming a horror game and I will have the time of my life. That does not mean that when I see it in a movie, I don't gag. Um, but all that said, I do also really love comedy, and I love writing comedic things. And I mean, TBH, I love horror comedy. It's one of my favorite little niche genres. But um, this here is just supposed to be nice. The Witcher is a rom-com. Send that tweet, Robbie. Send that tweet. Send that motherfucking tweet. You are completely correct. I'm only on episode... So we just finished episode two. Since we're watching it together, it means that we're pacing ourselves. Um, but I did see that, like, breakup song thing. And uh, I think Jaskier is going through a wonderful lesbian breakup. And I will absolutely not elaborate on that any further. Um, also, that I'm seeing now that I forgot to pop this in front of um everything so hi <laughs> putting you putting you guys back there so you guys could see the chat there you go oh hello there we go cool so now you guys can see uh the chat properly sorry about that didn't notice um it is it fucking is it absolutely is it's a rom-com and they are going through a lesbian breakup and i have recently processed my first lesbian breakup and let me tell you um i was not a fan i was really not a fan of the whole process i thought it <laughs> sucked <laughs> I, I immediately made what i think is actually a total banger of a playlist um on my spotify um that like honestly i might post later because it was it was it's a banger and it really encompasses all the moods of a lesbian breakup um so 
And you know what? I think a lot of people can relate to a lesbian breakup. I don't think you have to be a lesbian to, to relate to the breakup. I'm fucking aromantic, and that breakup rocked my shit. So, um... <laughs> I really think I really think that was the breakup song from ja- from from Jaskier. I was really upset that he wasn't in the first two episodes. Also, speaking of episodes, I am still focused on this and I'm still writing. My brain is just also I, I have thoughts. I watched Arcane yesterday. I only saw the first episode. So um, I don't know anything else. The devastation that I had that nobody warned me that Victor's not in the first episode. They're not even adults yet in the first episode. I was so fucking confused. No, I was very mad. I was extremely pissed off. That episode, by the way, that episode, I'm, I'm redoing my Patreon tiers today. So I'm actually going to be bundling all of my podcasts within like one like tier for podcast, like one type of tier instead of having separate types of tiers for the separate shows. So if you subscribe to any of like the podcast tiers, you'll get stuff for, for all of my shows that are like Patreon eligible. So like all of my solo shows you will get um, on those Patreon tiers instead of having to pick um just because it's easier for me and then I will have tiers for game design separate from the tiers for writing because currently those two are stuck together and I feel like those are very different audiences so I'm going to be separating those but um I actually stayed up until three in the morning yesterday editing that footage of me listening to Arcane and I will be releasing it as a Patreon exclusive episode um that version of it um will be released uh probably this coming week on Patreon Otherwise, if you don't want to subscribe to the Patreon, um, or at least not on a tier that gets, like, the bonus episodes, you will get to hear the episode on the next season of Cringe Warning. You'll just have to wait till the summer when season three starts airing. Um, but, yeah, that's – that. It, it, I had a lot of failings yesterday. I also did not know that that viral song from Imagine Dragons that's on – that it's on every TikTok, I didn't know that that was the theme song for Arcane. So I screamed on the recording. I lost my shit. And then also the Patreon thing starts with me uh, singing a few bars and um, will hopefully remain starting with me singing a few bars if I don't have to cut it out for copyright uh, infringement, even though it's very brief. There's no music. It's just me singing. Um, So frankly, if that warrants a copyright flag, that would be pretty flattering at this point, actually. Um, A little more realistically, it will not. Let's see. Triple surprise. You all want a raffle? Okay, so that is the quick start. So this will um, so this will come with a quick start. This is growing vastly and and very quickly with this game. So this will come with a quick start, so that you can play a quick start and a set adventure maybe. I hate myself. <sighs> but like. It's hard for me to make games that stay small sometimes because I'm just like, but this would be cool if you had this, if you had this, if you had this. And then I'm like, oh shit, this is big now. Cool. Great. Amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this I'm going to have to actually move because I'm actually not sure if that's going to be how we structure that or if I'm going to structure that within the different levels. Choose your comfort level. Like capitalizing things because I'm German. Everything being lowercase in English makes me um, unhappy. It doesn't make sense to me that all of your nouns are lowercase. Everything in German is capitalized. Every name, place, noun is capitalized. I don't understand. It doesn't look right. Look at this. Look at this short. Look at this short ass thing. Look. Look at how low everything is. Incorrect. Hate it. Um, you'll see that a lot in my writing is random capitalization. It's not random. It's that I wasn't paying attention and I started capitalizing things like I was typing in German, and then I just did not correct it because Google does not always tell me that I need to make something lowercase. It just assumes I know what I'm doing, which like bold. Um, definitely not actually the case most of the time. Let me get rid of that. The reason there are little stars there is because I wrote this in a fucking um, notes app on my phone before I moved it to Google Docs, and the, the formatting doesn't, like, carry over very well. All right, we made you one bigger. Oh, let's keep. Nope, nope. Did not realize my caps lock was on. So a lot of people use lorem ipsum, and, you know, um... Valid. I do this to say formatting. Um, There's no way I'm going to be typing out any kind of Latin text ever again. I took Latin since I've had Latin since I was like 10. 
I avoid it like the plague. And by since I was 10, I mean like the entirety of secondary school and most of university. So I'm not doing that shit again. Let's see. So this will be the one-shot version of the game uh, for three to five players. I, th I think you could still do three to five players for all of these. So I'm not going to change that depending on, on this. That'll stay. So up there at the top, it'll, three to five players, valid. No GM. I don't think you need a GM for any of these uh, for the way that I'm thinking about putting them. So you have enough for the short vacation you had planned. You just planned a quick orbit around the Earth. Trip was a prize you all want to raffle. Quick start, set adventure. And then economy plus. Let's see. Mini series. Maybe set. A mini series is usually four to. How many weeks? Ten max is usually. It's, it's, that's a lot, TBH. The longest mini series I was in was six weeks, I think. I might be incorrect. Um, versus like one season of a long campaign, which can be, or even a limited series where it's like, it's not ongoing, but a long-term campaign. I think when I, when I'm thinking about Glenbrook Unhallowed, we've been doing that for, I want to say five weeks, like, we, cause we hit episode five, I think the other day. So we hit five weeks and we have five more planned Number one. Oh, BB, that's so cute. <laughs> I love that very much. I just keyboard smash. So I think the Glenbrook Unhallowed series that I'm in currently, where I play Alara, that from Unmade Gaming, uh, so twitch.tv slash Unmade Gaming, that goes, that'll go, I think, 10 weeks total. And that I would almost see as like quote unquote long term campaign because it's like season a season of a campaign and like I'm unsure if we'll do another season or not. I don't know how, what their plans are. Um, I mean, I'd love to continue playing Alara, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what the story is. Um, I do. I just really love playing in like retro and sci fi things or retro and horror horror things. It's just very fun to play in this little fictional eighties. Let's see. So um, I'd say four to. Six weeks, because mini, mini campaign, I think four to six weeks is fine. Hello. Um, thank you. Four to six episodes. Also, by the way, there is a change coming to Eat Crit. I don't know if I should be talking about it here, but I have come up with it. And I, because originally I was like, hey, this morning when I was writing this, by the way, as I was brushing my teeth, which I made myself do to stop writing this, uh, I came up with another show at first it was just the title and then i was like hmm should i do this and then i was like mm, this is still very similar to something else that i'm doing and then i kept thinking about it and i was like hey what if i split eat crit into two shows because the two halves of eat crit the live like the interviews weekly and the uh live like solo plays of games where i do quick starts of games um they're very different from each other and they both serve to support pushing like content creators and like boosting them and also helping people like maybe even new people get into both game design and also get into TTRPGs, mostly get into playing TTRPGs. So I was thinking that for the next season, because I've already recorded everything as is, I'm not going to switch things up halfway through a season, but for the next season of Eat Crit, I am thinking that I will be splitting it into two shows. One show will be called Eat Crit, that will be the interviews once a week. Um, at same frequency we're having right now, and then uh, the second show will also air once a week, still in the same spot, same slot, literally nothing changes except that it will no longer all be under Eat Crit, it will be under a different uh, name, so it'll have its own page, um, so I was, I was going to do the Eat Crit solo episodes uh, are going to be called Quick Start, because it's basically what they are. They're quick starts. They're me generating quick starts for indie TTRPGs. Um, so format will be the same, but it'll be two different shows, uh, two different umbrellas. And also I think that'll help like people be able to maybe uh, pick and choose what they want. I'm not sure yet that's exactly what I'm going to do, or if I will still have them both under the eCrit label and just change the art and name. But if I'm already changing the art name, I might as well make it its own thing. So um, I'll be thinking about that. Feedback is welcome, especially from like listeners. Um of the show 
are fans of the show, supporters of the concept, whatever uh, people would like to call themselves. So, but I'll be, I'm thinking about that for the next season. I just, I think it would be, they're just very different from each other, the solo episodes and the, what's it called, fucking interviews. Plus, um, when I tell people, like, I want Ecrit to be able to be, like, a catalog of both talent and games, I just feel like if you're looking for one, doesn't mean you're looking for the other inherently. And when I tell people I also want it to be a resource, it might be better organized if I separated them. So instead of them, instead of Ecrit airing twice a week, Ecrit will continue to air interviews once a week, and Quick Start will air once a week in the same slot that Ecrit solo episodes used to go. But we will see. We will see. It's the same amount of work for me. It really is just a like marketing and logistics thing. That is, it's the only a marketing and logistics change. It's the same amount of work. It's the same amount of content. Let's see, four to six weeks. So it's weeks. Hmm. <laughs> Let me leave out weeks because I don't want people to think in-game weeks. I mean, like as in like for you to play weeks. Four to six episodes. Maybe an array of. Quick start premises to choose from. Maybe four. D4. Let's use a D4. Mm, we'll think about that. We'll think about that one. It's just because I don't want to use a D6 because I don't want to have to make six quick starts for like a bunch of things. I'd rather keep it a little bit low. Or we don't roll it all and you guys can just pick. And I can make three. Actually, let me leave that out because that is uh, unclear. Now we have quick start premises, um, pregens, I'd say long term campaign is a minimum of six weeks, six to I mean, shit, how long do you want to fuck? What is, what would you guys think? Long-term, ongoing campaign. Six to infinite? <laughs> if anybody played infinite episodes of any of my games, I would absolutely lose my noodle. I would fucking crack my walnut. I would lose my mind. Let me see. Uh, six plus? Should we say, maybe, since we have six there, maybe set like 10 plus. Let's say 10 plus right now. 10 plus episodes because that's 10 weeks that's not nothing that's a fifth of the year which is quite a bit so and most episodes that is like that's like uh four months almost no yeah because 12 weeks is or 12 ish weeks is like four months I right, math and calendar calendar math really stumps me uh it stumps me but good let me see is there space between these there should be oop that would be why that didn't format. I was like, why is this not moving? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Also. Food and supplies to last the mid-length vacation you had planned. Let's see, planned to explore or sightsee, plan to sightsee through the, that's our galaxy, right? Milky Way. Don't know why it's called that actually, never thought about it. Through the Milky Way. So that means potential like Planetary visits, potential space station visits. Because they could help you if you got to a space station. Maybe that's like your, your goal. Okay, actually. So 
that could be like where the mini series ends. And then the cool thing is, mini series often have multiple seasons. Ten weeks of fifth of the year. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. My bad. My bad. It is. It is though. It'll haunt me too. Don't worry. Ooh, I have been. My name has been slid over to suburbs, but I don't. I am so into this. Two rotating casts on the same ship, one playing the same, they're playing alien on ship. Yes! That would be really fucking funny. Oh, that would be so cool. It's people truly having totally different experiences on this damn ship. Ugh, <laughs> oh, God. I haven't played Mothership and I really want to. I've been very curious, I've heard nothing but good things. Now mostly though, like, a uh, part of my brain is set on like, uh, hello, um, suburbs by night. Hi, hello, hi, hello, I would love to. Would love to pop in on your cast. Would love to play something that is Desperate Housewives meets, <laughs> meets. Oh god, that is so cute for Vampire the Masquerade. That's just like straight up what we do in the shadows and Desperate Housewives. It's fucking, I'd love that. That's so sweet. All right, nice. Getting some very nice people offering to run Vampire the Masquerade for me in 2022, and I'm very excited because. All of my friends have played Vampire in the Masquerade. I have never played Vampire the Masquerade. I acted in a one-shot once, but I had no idea about the game or its mechanics, and I did not create the character, and I was really just filling in as, like, an actor for the original, like, for the person who was originally supposed to play that character. So I, I didn't actually play the game. It was just, it was literally, like, a micro one-shot that was for a, an ongoing campaign they were doing. So I've never actually played Vampire the Masquerade because in what we played, there were there was no combat, there was no nothing. I literally just played this character for development of the character of the main cast. Um, and it was fun, but I didn't like actually play the game. So I I am very curious about Vampire the Masquerade and I would love to play it in 2022. I keep saying this year, I mean 2022. Thank you. I'm really glad to. I'm very excited. And if somebody offers to run this for me and it works out, I am dragging you into it. We will be playing it together. I cannot wait. I'm very excited. I'm also very excited to start recording guests for eCrit so that I can grab you and have you on Zoom and have you on the show. That is, it's already on my list. You're already on my list. So it'll just be a scheduling thing. But I don't start recording guests until, um, do you remember March, April? I'd say, I was going to say April, but I move, like, at the beginning-ish of April, and I don't want to, like, move and then have to interview people while my place is a mess, so I'll probably start recording for the next seasons of my shows in May slash late April when I am actually settled in to my new place and have everything, like, nice and stable, which also means that March is going to be absolute fucking hell month for me because I will be pre-recording everything that airs in the month of April to give myself room to move. Um... And that, that's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm excited, but also I'm going to die. Let's see. Enough food and supplies to last a mid-length vacation. Enough food and supplies to last six months. As you had originally planned. With your ship already in another galaxy. So let's say maybe this way, this one happens like halfway through. And then for this one, also pregens, but no premises, I think. Hmm. Not sure if I'll make them because a, a long-term one, I want to give people the freedom to be able to like create the campaign that they want, tell the story that they want, so I can have some like 
suggestions for like things that could happen. Maybe like a paragraph of suggestions. Why is this not typing? Weird. This is ironically, so filling out things like this, like, cause this is just the outline so far of like what each is gonna entail, but like filling this out is actually the most time consuming part of game design for me personally, just cause it physically takes time to write all of this shit out and like file it down to make sure it makes sense. Creating game mechanics, way fucking faster. So much fucking faster, but I can't necessarily create the mechanics until I have the story nailed down because the mechanics have to serve the, you know, premise of getting from A to B. And if I don't know what A to B it, like, looks like, then I have no idea what the mechanics are supposed to do. So this always takes me a hot minute, and then afterwards it goes off a lot faster. Let's see, create their own campaigns. 10 plus episodes. Let's see, let me just write down some more ideas for some pre-gen. So this, and the cool thing is, this is not actually gendered. Anybody can be a Midwestern mom. Being a Midwestern mom, and really it's a Midwestern mom, is a mood. It's a vibe. It's a personality type. It's like a mom friend, but more. Like mom friend squared. Mom friend to the power of N is what that is. It's actually TBH, what I'm going to fucking write down. Ironically, I actually personally disagree with labeling space as the final frontier. I think the ocean is the final frontier because we fucking explored space, but we stay the hell out of the ocean. And you know what? A, for good fucking reason, but B, that means the space is not the final frontier. But okay. Also, I assume half of the jokes that I make in these scripts are not going to land. Ooh, I feel like the Midwestern mom is in interesting, like, cosmetics. Yes, it really does. It really fucking does. Please. I mean, look, any thoughts you have on this that you want to share with the class in any place, shape, or form, I'm so here for. Ooh, no. You know what would be really fun? Like, a game where everybody plays a Midwestern mom, but, like, all of the different types of Midwestern moms. Oh, my fuck, I'm writing it down. I'm fucking writing it down. I've got my notes app open. 
because I also grew up with a quote unquote Midwestern mom, but um, she was an immigrant. So a very different type of Midwestern mom. Um, and even amongst like immigrant ones, shush, ooh! You know, so I've already written another hack of Fahex Nochmal that's based on Kobolds uh, that I'm still working on TBH because uh, we don't film for, we don't film until, until like 2022, so that works. So I don't have to be done yet. But like, I think that would be a really great vehicle for that. You are correct, Midwestern mom. Me and hack. All right, I've written it down. I've written it down. I'll probably stream working on that at some point, but um, there we go. Um, it's just Midwestern mom is just such a vibe, and I love them so much, and like, they're just fascinating me also it's just really pleasant voice to do tbh that's why i love fahex nochmal so much is that that game is so fucking hackable it's stupid like it is so fucking hackable and i'm really really proud because i designed it to be that way on purpose and i'm just really happy that it actually like works that way that is really 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 satisfying to me i'm very very happy that that was the first thing that came to mind because that would actually work really well. Man, I'm obsessed with this. Do not get distracted. You are working on space. Do not get distracted. You are working on space. Also, Stuck in Space is just currently the working title because I do love me a little alliteration or at least an, a near al alliteration. Alliteration is very difficult to say several times in a row. But um, it's just a working title. I'm not sure if I'll keep it yet. But I... Ooh. Can you imagine... Also, like, a character you could play in the Midwestern Mom thing where it's an alien Midwestern mom, like, an alien who landed in, like, the 50s Midwest and has been trying to assimilate but is still a fucking alien. Oh, how lovely. Honest to God, the, like, 1950s era that they did on WandaVision was my favorite aesthetically. It was just really interesting to watch and see those, like, TV tropes play in, um, in a modern show. I, I thought that that was really interesting to me. I think it's just, it was really cool. However, I'm also a very big proponent of like when people are like, man, I wish I lived there. I'm like, I fucking don't. Fuck no. But I can admire the way something looks. All right. Obsessed with the aesthetic of the year 3000. Small Jonas Brothers reference, as is necessary for um, success, really, in a game or in anything. Ooh. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, occasionally, uh, I get DMs that are moderately unpleasant, and then I'm I make noises out loud. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see. Obsessed with the year 3000. Probably a grad student. Let's de-age me a little bit. Although, no, I'm already post-grad, so. Probably a grad student studying. <laughs> Which one of my degrees is the most useless? No, but that would still be useful here, never mind. Hmm, studying, maybe let's make her an Uhura fan, studying communications. Well, actually, let's maybe she just maybe they do speak languages. Maybe, but no, they can't. But well, we just said there's no interplanetary. But maybe I said that there's no interplanetary visits just because aliens don't want fucking tourists. That's probably it. Aliens don't want fucking tourists. Let me add that caveat up to the top to make it clear that it's not because they don't exist or because we haven't found them.
one day I will maybe censor my games and have no swearing in them and then say they are kid friendly, but that day is definitely not today. Probably not this game, TBH. Thanks for coming to hang out while we design this game. Hi, hi, Pico. Presses F to doubt. Pfft. Shush. All right. Actually, give me a second. I have to. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They saw the history and they went, mm, no, thank you. I, I, I would love more sci-fi where aliens are aware of humans and have made a conscious decision not to fuck with them or a like you can you can do maybe maybe we could do some business here and there. Maybe we can meet in neutral territory, but you are not allowed on our fucking planet. <laughs> no tourists. No fucking thank you. Maybe even the aliens coming in and being like, oh, like maybe aliens coming in and being like, oh, the people of Hawaii don't want you there. Snap finger. No more tourists in Hawaii. Done. That'd be so nice. That'd be so nice. Thank you, thank you. I will, I will read anything you write. You are a brilliant storyteller. And I love the tone that you've like have, that I've seen from like working with you. Hi, Dana. Hi, boo. I am working on a new game that I was inspired to do this morning and it is becoming a lot bigger than I anticipated it being, but I will persevere. Um, and we're, now we're doing character, pre-generated character creation. So we've got a Y3K baddie. We've got someone who thought they'd seen it all. So an old ass motherfucker. I love playing old characters. I don't usually get to do that. But also, I don't usually get to play villains either. Which is weird, given my everything. Um, but I am actually playing a villain in a private game uh, on December 26th. Um, I'm very, very excited. Some of my friends are running a D&D one shot just for us. Just to play. And it's going to be my first non-streamed game. Uh, in that's just for fun, not for work at all, in, in like three years. So I'm very excited. Uh, and I will get to finally play a villain, which is going to be super fun. Um, also a good point to be like, hi, hello, have me as a villain on your show. Just as a guest, just as a villain. Pop me somewhere, let me cause some shit and let me leave. That sounds ideal. So I'm trying to think of who are these people that are on this space vacation? Sorry, I have to respond to something real quick. Just send my availability to something. Um, let's see. Who else is on this? Who could be on this? What is an interesting person? Oh, maybe the sci-fi geek. The sci-fi fan who's living their best life. This is the best thing that's ever happened to them. Although they are realizing that they are woefully unprepared for the realities of being stranded in space. Yeah, the trip is a dream come true.
engineering i know i wrote it correctly but that looks so wrong i english sucks <laughs> ah, english i know it's correct because it says it's correct but i hate it All right, let's see. Non-gendered boy, Girl Scout. Ooh. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that all of these aren't necessarily gendered. I don't have that, but that would be really cool. Because, like, I know that I said that, like, the settings have enough that you, like, need. But the personality of a quote-unquote Boy Scout is a different thing. And that is really fun. Because also, here's the thing. I know some people don't like quote-unquote annoying characters. I think they're fucking hilarious. But to be fair, I find being both embarrassed and annoyed interesting more than actually irritating um, or, like, upsetting. But I'm weird. Um, I'm aware of that. But I just... It's... It's, it's, it's interesting. I, it, if everybody got along all the time and everybody was both, was easy to like deal with on a show, like where's the tension? If everybody just gets along all the time and nobody has any conflict, that is not a show. And this bitch sounds fucking annoying. And I would know that because I have like, I was so prepared for everything always. My backpack when I was in university had something for everything. I had extra pens. Somebody ran out of pens as long as they don't fucking talk to me. I had Sharpies. I had like fucking first aid shit in that fucking bag. Um, and while I wasn't annoying about it because I didn't like talking to people and it was never a socially anxious thing. A lot of people in university apparently thought that I was socially anxious and I was like, no, whenever it was confronted like with me and they were like, oh, it's okay if you're anxious. I was like, I'm not anxious. I don't like you. <laughs> Yes, I am always really happy to be able to offer them the thing out of my bag. I carry half a pharmacy in my purse with me at literally all times, and I have the tiniest motherfucking bags. It looks like I am uh, doing something inappropriate. <laughs> Just at me next time! Stop! Seriously, though, it is... It's... <laughs> It's a mood. I love when people need something and I can just whip it out and be like, here you go. And they're like, oh, my head. And I'm like, do you want an aspirin? Here. And I pull out this massive. I have it next. I have a bottle of aspirin on my work desk at all times. It never leaves this desk, this particular bottle. I also have one downstairs to take with me places so that I don't accidentally take it out and forget it or something or put it in my purse and have to go get it. I always have one up here because I get I work on screens all day and I don't currently have glasses that I very much need so I get headaches on a like a, a bit too much uh necessarily so I I have those yeah that makes sense that makes sense I actually actively you know how people say you should kill your ego I have killed my inner mom friend um because that bitch did not mesh with the rest of my personality and I was like this is a weird aspect of me that I am frankly unsure where it came from I know I'm like a cancer sun and a cancer moon, but this is ridiculous. Um, so I have killed that bitch. Right? Hi, Ryan. Oh, I am obsessed with the Y3K baddie. <laughs> it is very brandy me. Thank you. Um, I'm doing the pre-gens uh, for Stuck in Space, which is a game I came up with this morning. And so far, we're, we're doing all right. Um, we're doing okay. But I needed to get the pre-gens before I work out the mechanics because I wanted to have that just be solid while the mechanics stew in my like in the back of my mind let's see so we've got the sci-fi fan who's living their best life so the premise of this is these are normal people that went on a space vacation and the astronaut guide they had accidentally exited the vehicle 
Um, just to make sure that they don't die, I said that they go into, like, the only emergency escape pod on the, like, cruiser, and they get hit by an asteroid, so it unlodges, and they get fucking set the fuck out of course to, to Earth, so they can no longer help you. But because it also, like, hits you, the calms are down. The rest of the ship is fine. This is not a horror game. I mean, people can play it as a horror game. I really don't care. As soon as I make a game, it's fully up to the players what they do with it. I support everything. Just... You can play it horror. You can play it funny. I wrote it funny. I don't care if people put their own spin on it. Um, and now all these normal people have to figure out a way to either, like, to get back home or, like, I mean, just finish out the vacation. And I'm trying to write it so that there is a version of this you can play as a one-shot, as a miniseries, or set up for long-term campaign play. It was supposed to just be a micro-RPG, but I have no self-control. Um, and now I'm working on some free gens. I said three to five players is like a good sweet spot and there's no jam, which will also like affect the mechanics, which is why they're stewing in the back of my brain. Um, but I wanted to come up with at least five pre gens since I said three to five, just in case this is like a group of newbies that aren't like familiar with character creation. Um, plus, since I'm still working on the mechanics, I don't know if these should have any stats or if this is just so that you know who you are. Um, I might give them like one stat. Um, when I did two stats, so Fahex Nochmal has three stats per character, two pluses and one minus modifier. Um, Forever 41 has one plus and one minus modifier. Forever 41's holiday expansion has an extra with just one, like, once per game plus modifier. So for this one, I'm not sure yet. Um, honestly, minus modifier, I might not do, just because, like, frankly, I've noticed you don't need it, (laughs) so... Or at least in a lot of the games that I write, you don't need it. So we are I'm thinking about this. I know the mid mom is going to be like, oh, let me put a little hyphen there so that people understand that it is mom friend. Mom friend to the power of N. Let's see. It's definitely going to be like, has have like some sort of caretaker assistance, I think. Caretaker or managerial because a good, like a Midwestern mom a Midwestern mom is not to be reckoned with. Um, I'm thinking very Kitty Foreman for this particularly, just the vibe of Kitty Foreman um, from that 70s show. Because when I think Midwestern mom, I think Kitty Foreman. But to be fair, I did watch that 70s show very, very aggressively when I was in high school because my friends were super into it. So whenever we hung out, we would, they bought like this box set of like all of these seasons. We did not watch the last two because as a group, we pretended they don't exist. But um, we would literally meet up and just start from the beginning and then watch all the way through. And then after a few meetups when we'd watched all the way through, we would literally just start over. And I just liked hanging out with people, so I was cool with it. And so as a result, I have seen that show like four times. (laughs) I think I've only ever watched it of my own volition, like alone once. Um, But I have that image of the Midwestern mom that is Kitty Foreman. And because I am also a 90s baby, I have an AOL account still, a private AOL account. Um, And back when I got it in literally the year 2000, uh, they had this cool thing where um, they had like you can instead of having the you've got mail voice, you could have a celebrity of the times say you've got mail. So you could have Britney Spears. In her voice, like straight up, Britney Spears say that you've got mail. You could have Christina Aguilera say that you've got mail. Um, you could have, I think, Carlton. So Alfonso Riviero say in like his, his voice that he does for, for Carlton, his intonation, you could have him say that you've got mail. And I, like, and this must have been later. This must have been later in the 2000s when they added this one because they had it. They actually still had that option. By the time I was in college, you could still toggle it on and off. So they uh, collected them throughout the years. And at some point, I picked mine to be Kitty Foreman. So the actress who plays Kitty Foreman recorded a You've Got Mail in Kitty Foreman's voice with the Kitty Foreman laugh. But now AOL has gotten rid of the toggle feature for it because they got rid of the feature, but it's still there. So every time I open my AOL account and the volume of my computer is on, Kitty Foreman laughs extremely loudly and says, Honey, you've got mail. And I lose my shit every time. Every fucking time. That shit is gold. It makes me very happy. I'm very glad that when they got rid of the feature, they didn't, like, delete the files. They just deleted your access to turning them off. But that shit is great. 10 out of 10. And that is what I'm thinking about for Midwestern Mom. Just as a personality type. And uh, so the one shot, you can play any of these characters, and your premise is that you guys won this trip in a raffle, so you didn't even pay for it. 
So it can really just, you can backstory whatever the fuck you want. I'm just giving people some concepts of who the hell is on this spaceship. And then choosing the comfort level, a.k.a. the length of the game, they can, like, see. Plus, I thought it was fitting if, like, the raffled one where, like, everybody won and that's why you're here, you didn't pay for it, is, like, the lowest comfort level of, like, a short vacation. Like, maybe it's just, like, a quick orbit around the Earth and then you come back home was, like, the original goal. So, <sighs> can try to be resolved within a one-shot, but I'm still thinking about that. I'm still thinking. Because I was originally conceiving this to be episodic where, like, if you even if you just do a one shot like you don't have to like solve your crisis in the one shot so much as just like you can just play through an adventure so that's how i put them a little set adventure which also means i have to come up with them i miss working on the game books the game books are the part that i like the best also tbh this might be the cover of a of the game Usually when I design games, I, I hop back and forth between the pretty game book and the actual game. Also, was very, very blessed to um, have received uh, the, the funds, a tip, to end up uh, being able to unlock Canva Pro. So super grateful to at Alicia Kills. Don't reveal our ages like that. Oh, no, Rook. What did you do? Hotel California. What is AOL? Oh, ouch. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> AOL is a fossil. It's okay, baby. I forget how young you are, Rook. Um, it's okay. It's just a, uh, an online. It's, it was, it's an email platform, and it was just like an online thing. So, that, so when people talk about like, AOL Instant Messenger, like AIM, like that's that's from AOL, um, and it used to be like one of the first like online Instant Messenger portals, so to say. Um, I love this actually. This is perfect. I, again, I didn't mean for it to look like Star Wars. I it just put space in there, and I wasn't like, "Huh, it looks like Star Wars." And here we are. Yeah, I I love this. It did, it was, yeah, it was before MSN was a thing, um, or it was, it was there at the same time-ish, but MSN, I think, became bigger later. I don't know. I didn't hop on to, I think it was the competitor, no, because MSN is from Yahoo, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's the competitor. MSN is the competitor to AIM. If, if I'm right, if I'm wrong, please tell me. Um, I love learning things. Okay, let's see. Okay, I really love this, actually. And this is easy to fucking read. Uh, so easy to read. How nice. How legible. We love that. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave that there. Eventually, I'll make posters and shit of my own fucking games and frame them in my own, in my own little workspace just because they're nice. Cool. Okay, yeah, so MSN was the competitor to AIM because uh, Yahoo versus uh, AOL. Um... AOL is still around. I mean, I can still use my email, um, but it is old. And like occasionally if people like IRL wanted my email address and I didn't want to give them the one that I used for university. So my Gmail, um, I gave them my AOL address and they'd go, you fucking have an AOL address. And the problem is AOL addresses are also so old that some interfaces like mailing letters and stuff do not work with AOL email addresses anymore. <laughs> so just go straight to your spam if it gets to you at all. Um, so that's fun. Although to be fair, I have had people send me their old MSN. Like when I was, uh, when I taught university, when I was teaching undergrads, um, I did have a student who was barely younger than me. So that was weird. Um, to be fair, I was only at most four years older than most of my students. Max, I think I was five years older than my youngest student. So that was already weird. Um, but when I was doing that, somebody gave me their MSN email as their class email. And I was like, you might want to reconsider the type of email you use at university because it was like a very 
I don't like saying cringe because I have a show called fucking cringe warnings. I'm really like glass house, not about to throw a rock, but like truly some interesting usernames uh, in German, of course, uh, some of them, but like back when I was helping out in university in Germany, but like even in English, I've, I've seen some truly questionable uh, email addresses <laughs> sent as like official emails for correspondence. And I'm like, this is funny to me but a professor might not find that as funny like a full one a real professor whereas like i was just an assistant professor let me see let me see the stay ready scout One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's five. I, I might make more pre-gens if more come to me. Um, if not, that is okay. Let me see. Let me copy. Economy one shot. Actually, let me copy all of these. Because then this is going to be the area where I expand on them. Shush move oh no yeah it, it can get really complicated it is very impractical i've heard that some msn emails don't always work or like the things get sent to your spam more often or like if they try to email you it gets sent to spam i know that if i email people sometimes they think it's spam and i'm like no that's just my email address i legitimately still have an aol account um I mean, mostly I use Gmail, but like for old things where I was just like, I'm not going to change my like email registration in this thing anymore. So I just keep it still. Um, I no longer remember the login information for this AOL account. So if I ever get signed out of it, it's game over. <laughs> I don't fucking know what the fucking, I, I don't know what it is. I'm just really grateful that my iPhone still let me f like log into it in the mail app where like it collects all of your email addresses. I'm really grateful that it still offers you the option of signing in with an AOL account. <laughs> Let me see. So I'm just making bullet points out of everything that needs to be expanded upon or written out specifically. It's kind of like creating a little to-do list out of my outline. That's two. So that's the premise. Uh, alien encounters, planetary visits, those are events. That's the goal. Pre-gens, graph of suggestion events, encourage people to create their own campaigns. Note that it is set to be 10 episodes or more. You need three to five players. All right, mechanics. Let's see. So conceptually, so this is the premise. Mm-hmm. Year three. Oh, that reminds me, double space, because I, or at least 1.5, 1.5 space. Double space might give people university flashbacks, but this is fine. 1.5 space is fine. So I'm thinking no jam. Collaborative storytelling all the way, baby. 
Let's see, let's make this 13. This needs to be rewritten slightly. Yeah, like, the way that I talk is how I take notes, so that's maybe not <laughs> to be included. Accidentally. And then then. Play as regular people who sign up for a space vacation. Right at the start, their astronaut guide accidentally abandons them. The guide Okay, premise done. Mm -hmm. Not sure exactly what the time for this would be. I guess we'll be able to estimate that best after we have stuff. Love-hate relationship with double space. Ah, yeah, I know what you mean. I like it because it's easier for me to read. Physically, it's just easier for me to read. But um, I also know that like having to scroll a bunch to see something that's just like a little bit further away is, can be a little annoying. Let's see. I do remember having many moments of panic when I was like in my early days of university being like, I didn't write enough, I haven't reached the pages. And then like somebody pointing out, you didn't double space it. And then I double space it and I'm like two pages over the limit. I'm like, fuck, I actually have to edit down. All right, let's see. Comfort level, settings, place, campaign length. Yeah, okay, well let's delete that because that's not necessary, I already wrote that down. Okay, those are the options.
four to six episodes. Let's say that could be like a, what's a, what's a sizable vacation? Three weeks? Oh, minimum word count. I see. The cool thing is I never shut the fuck up. And um, word counts do not scare me anymore. If anything, uh, word counts are scared of me. Man, if I had lived in Dickens' age and, like, been able to successfully pretend to be a white man, I would have made a fucking killing. See, I thought so. Two weeks can work. Two, two weeks is like a medium vacation. You could play two weeks over a miniseries. I briefly forgot how to spell leg. I, I looked at it for a split second and was like, that looks incorrect, but there's really only three letters in it. Valid. Valid, valid. A dream vacation of mine, because I grew up for a majority of the time when I was growing up. I grew up about an hour away from Paris, France, and I know the city really, really well, but I was only ever able to do like brief like day trips or weekend trips over there because I mean, it's easier because like the train would take me from my hometown's train station directly to like Gardenau, Paris. So um, I know the city really well, but I've never been able to actually spend time there. And as long as I keep my fucking mouth shut so they don't hear my French, um, accents, great. Ability to speak, minimal um so as long as i don't speak they tend to assume i'm from paris because there's a lot of armenian people in paris and i found when you mix native american and german you get middle eastern so um at least that's what white people tend to think so i do okay in paris and i really really like the place so an ideal like dream of mine would be to be able to get like a nice airbnb for like three months maybe maybe a little bit more maybe six months but like eh, i don't like staying like away from home home too long but like just three months just three months of just living over there just fucking living there and doing my little thing maybe like writing working on my stuff literally just living my life um maybe take small break from business meetings but like i like them so i don't really mind them so really just kind of just live live my life happy and chill in in a prepaid Airbnb for three months in Paris where like I have free time and I can walk around and just be there because it is really beautiful I really really I really love the city I love spending time there um, plus the cool thing about growing up so close to it is the tourist shit does not appeal to me at all and I will warn everybody I can away from going to the fucking Eiffel Tower because a it's expensive as shit b you wait for three plus hours just to get to the top and let me tell you it is not anywhere near the best view of Paris because why the fuck would you want a view of Paris where you can't see the Eiffel Tower? That's the best part of the skyline and you're on top of it. You can't see it. You can't see it. It's not the best view of Paris. Not even remotely. It's also a bit too tall. You end up seeing a bunch of rooftops. Like, it's not great. It's, it's not that cool. The best views of Paris are Sakaka, which is a church on a hill, which is free. I mean, you have to hike the fuck up there, but like, it's free. And that's one of the best views of the city you'll get. The other best view of Paris is also free, free 99. 
Um, and it is the viewing platform on top of Centre Pompidou, which is a modern art museum in Paris, which also has a bunch of free exhibits. And like even the paid ones are very cheap. Um, and if you're a student of any kind, you get a heavy discount, which is great. Um, that's my favorite museum in Paris. It's the place I've spent the most time in because it's got really pretty area outside as well um, where you can just sit and chill and, and do whatever. And it's really, really cool art museum. And the viewing platform attached to the museum has an entrance point outside of the museum. So you don't even have to go into the museum to get to the little platform. You walk up two flights of stairs, maybe three, I think. Um, they're very elongated, so they're a lot like taller than it sounds and you get this really beautiful view just above the city and you get to see everything you can see the eiffel tower from there if i remember correctly and i think those are the two best views of paris there's no wait time to see them they're not crowded really like in a way where you can't see things sakaka is always crowded during vacation times but you can still see things really easily no matter how many people there are because of how fucking high up it is um and they're they're free they're fucking free but the fucking eiffel tower getting on top of that bitch is terrifying the elevator is shockingly old um it also doesn't go all the way up so you still have to walk quite a lot of stairs so it is not accessible uh, at all to get to the top um whereas with uh the Centre Pompidou platform yeah the outside has stairs but you can also get there by going indoors and using the elevator so and that's also free so much more accessible Sakaka, not super accessible I think it's very walkable but if you can't walk it's a little tricky but if you have somebody to help you um you should be able to get up there um as well since it's just like a part of the city so yeah yeah no i'm i am extremely afraid of heights and my friends who had never been to paris went with to paris with me once when i had already been to paris and they really wanted to go so i went with them they were afraid of elevators my friends i had two asthma attacks on those stairs i am dead serious i had two fucking asthma attacks on the stairs to the Eiffel Tower after I'd already seen the Eiffel Tower several times in my life and then I had to cling to my friends when we were at the very top because the fucking floor is made of plexiglass so you can see straight fucking through it and I first of all I was wearing a dress stupid idea very very bad um so I was clenching my legs together like I my life depended on it yeah it's well it's not plexiglass just plexiglass it's like reinforced it's stable it's safe but like it's see-through is my point you can see straight the fuck down it is horrible and I hate it um I was very dizzy I have horrible vertigo I have vertigo if I stand on my chair right now I get vertigo that is how like bad I have vertigo um I'm good yeah um, never again. Absolutely nothing could get me back on the Eiffel Tower. Um, I will happily stay at the bottom or, you know what? Leave me alone. Let me do my own thing and I'll meet you in five hours after you've done that one thing for a bazillion dollars. I will meet you at a cafe and we will be able to talk about how you did not have to do that. That, that sounds good to me. Like, no, no thank you. Not enough money in the world to get me back on the goddamn Eiffel Tower. Let me see. Hmm. I think I might have to make event tables for this just because I think that's probably the easiest way to help people like with gameplay. So I'm probably going to need a D6 
to be fair, like I always tell people, it's the most common dice people tend to have. Super random. Uh, this weekend, let me check. Because I would like to, yes. Let me just check my weekend. So let's see, what do I have Saturday? Cool, actually I have, so, isn't this weekend Christmas? This weekend is Christmas. Not that I celebrate it, but just in case you do. Um, so on the 26th, I'm actually booked because I'm playing a beautiful one shot with Orion and with some of our friends. Um, so the 26th, I am booked for the afternoon and evening. Um, but I am free on actual Christmas, the 25th, in case you guys are playing then. Um, because I was planning on just streaming. To be fair, though, I am European and Mexican, so for me, Christmas is the 24th. Uh, so the 25th means jack shit to me, frankly. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. If you guys are playing on that day, I am free and I would love to. I haven't played Among Us since the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> I'm also famously very bad at it. I get voted to be the, uh... I get voted to be the imposter every time. And the reason is, I think, very rude. Um, and it's because I'm a little stupid. Um, so, yeah. Ooh! Yes! I would love that. I would absolutely love that. I was going to be streaming, or I'm going to be streaming as well, like on my own channel over the 25th and 24th as well. Yay! Um, I get voted as the imposter all the time because I, originally when I started playing it, I didn't know that the rooms had names. I didn't see them. I didn't see the names. I did not notice. So we'd be like, where were you? And I'd be like, uh, I went to the left. And they'd be like, that sounds sus. And I was like, it's not sus. I'm stupid. What do you mean there's names? And then they'd like ask you what tasks you do. But like sometimes the tasks are really hard. And I would just kind of like vaguely explain them because I also didn't know that the tasks had names because I was totally new to the game. And so they'd be like, well, did you do like this and this name? And I was like, did I do what? And they'd be like, so you don't even know what they're called. So you didn't see it. And I was like, no, I, I didn't look. I didn't know I was supposed to look. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to provide an alibi every time we play. I didn't, I don't know this game. And so I got voted out, I think almost every single time I've played that game because I, I just don't know what anything is called. <laughs> I've gotten a bit better at it, but I don't remember all of the names quite yet. So it'll, it'll be very entertaining for people to watch. That's for sure. 6 p.m. for me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That works. I was probably gonna stream my own stream in the morning because natural lighting and shit. But yeah, that would that would be lovely. I would love doing that. Let me make a note. I'll make a note in my calendar. Among us stream. Cool. I would love to do that. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Livia this week came up with a term for my affliction. Uh, she says I have situational bimbo syndrome, and uh, and I the first time she hit me in the head with that, I was like, I'm sorry. What did you just say? And she said, well, it's because sometimes, because so, you're really smart. And I was like, thanks for the preface. Continue. And she was like, but you say really, really airheaded shit sometimes. And I think the reason she said that is because I had recently done something extremely airheaded. And occasionally I will read something wrong and think it may, like that, that meant that they typed the opposite. So like she let me proofread one of her, one of her works that she's working on. And it was very heavy. And it was very sad and it was very intense. It was very all hurt, no comfort. And she had texted me, just so you know, this chapter is very, nothing is beautiful, everything hurts. And my brain switched it around to the normal version of it, which is everything is beautiful, nothing hurts. And so I read that with that in mind, incorrectly, cried my eyes out because she's very talented and it was very it was very intense and I was but as I was reading it I was expecting it to turn around because she said it was everything is beautiful nothing hurts but that's not what she said it's just what I read and so after it was done I called her and was like crying and I was like you fucking liar what the fuck do you mean everything's beautiful nothing hurts and she was like what are you talking about that's not what I said and I was like oh no <laughs> yeah that happens a lot happens a lot usually on the phone with Livia I will have my most ridiculous moments but that's because I spent most of my life talking to Livia um so just by percentage of how much exposure she has to me she really hears some extremely uh ridiculous bullshit <laughs> I was crying my eyes out and she was laughing her ass off 
And then uh, recently, my friend and I watched The Witcher together because we started season two together because I need to watch that show with someone specifically because sometimes it gets a little complicated and I, it's very long, so it's hard for me to maintain focus for a long time. So I sometimes miss stuff and then I get confused. So I have to watch it with somebody who is more neurotypical who can explain to me what I just missed because I wasn't paying attention or because like I didn't notice the thing that's apparently obvious to neurotypical people, but I don't get it. So uh, I, I usually tend to watch really, really long shows like that where the like, episodes are like fucking hour long uh, with friends. Also because watching with friends is more fun. So I was watching it with my friend and it took us both 10 minutes to realize that I had clicked resume instead of start season two and my Netflix had left it on season one, episode eight. So we watched season one, episode eight for 10 minutes before we fucking realized this was not season two, episode one. And I actually never realized it. They did. I sat there going, wow, I know like young actors age really quickly because they tend to grow really quickly. But I was watching it going like, dang, The actress for Siri looks exactly the same as last season. (laughs) And the whole time, my friend was predicting the things that were going to happen. And I thought, oh, did you already watch season? I thought like, oh, maybe maybe they already watched the first episode of season two and they're just rewatching it for me. Never did it occur to me that it's because I had also seen this before. Because I saw that when The Witcher came out two fucking years ago. Almost three years ago. Um, So... Yeah, I, I never actually noticed that we were watching the wrong thing. I had to be told, and then I was like, oh, shit, let me change it. Sorry. Yes. This is also a great moment to throw in that IQ tests really mean nothing, because according to the IQ tests that I took when I had to get, like, when I went through a phase of being constantly tested, um, technically, I'm a genius. Uh, take that with a heavy grain of salt, <laughs> considering everything else you know about me. <laughs> Those tests are bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, there's just that, and there's also there's a bazillion different types of intelligence, and you simply cannot have all of them. Let's see. Usually plan or ship in another galaxy. So, Ooh, actually. Ooh, wait. Wait, 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 let me. Prisons, blah, 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 blah. Go see your own galaxy again. List of quick start galaxies. That could be the premises. Nope, did not write that even remotely correctly. And that's still, cr- yeah, what am, okay, small stroke on stream. Oh, Jesus fucking, okay. I'm not even wearing fake nails anymore because I cost tested Endeavor when I got the suit yesterday. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Becca. <laughs> um, that's valid, chaotic gremlin genius. That's me. Um, I was cost testing Endeavor's suit yesterday, so I had to take my nails off because the suit has fingers. Um, like gloves, so I couldn't wear the nails, so I took them off. So there's really no reason for why that just happened. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. We're doing our best. So I had originally planned this to be a micro RPG that I could write really quickly. Um, that is not what is happening. We ship in another galaxy. It'll take at least two months to get to the border of the Milky Way. I keep, every time I see the phrase Milky Way, every time I type it or say it, I just think about the candy bar. Which is, by the way, not gluten-free, which is fucking rude. Aww. That's really sweet. Don't they slow bank as like a positive thing, like a relaxed thing? Aww. Hi, Pickles Cat. Thank you for slow blinking to my voice. I am slow blinking right back at you. That's so sweet. Oh, I will try to make sure not to make any shrill or really loud startling noises. Um, but yeah, the fact that Milky Way, the candy bar, is not gluten free makes me really, really sad. Like genuinely devastates me. Let's see.
This will make the most of the trip. Why is that? No. I'm not writing in the first person, Google. Who, is, who do you think I am? Hmm. Hmm. I need I need to change this to more official terminology just so the people understand what they're choosing. Um, because I think comfort level is indicated in in the explanation and in the title of the types. So choose your style of play, your play style, your your game 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 gameplay style choice. Yes, that's one word. Gameplay style choice. Uh okay, good. Okay, good. Session length. Yeah, choose your choose your story length. Choose your I feel like I've heard like I feel like I've heard play play play, play mode of play. No, that nobody says that. Nobody says that. Uh I think I was thinking the phrase mode of transportation and that is not applicable here. Choose your let me get rid of the your. Maybe the, maybe the your is messing with me. Choose a mode mode of play play mode mode of mode. Isn't there something with the word mode? Isn't isn't there something with the word mode? English. Why have you forsaken me? Also, until you asked me about a stream this weekend, I did not realize that Christmas was in two days. I know I knew it was the 22nd, but that meant nothing to me. I think I still thought I had a week until Christmas. Um, Jesus. Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. That means I accidentally... <gasps> Oops. Oh, shit. I have to text a bunch of people later. I have... Oh, I accidentally scheduled people to work on the 24th. <laughs> and they fucking said yes. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my god! No! Oh my god, no. Just because I'm not fucking celebrating. Oh no. I know Americans don't celebrate on the 24th, so some people still work on the 24th, but like... Oh no, I'm okay with waiting. Oh no. <laughs> Fuck. Oops. Okay. It's fine. It's all fine. It's all fine. <clears throat> Oops. Anyway, back to the game. Choose a yeah. Let me let me just have a session link. Okay, choose a session. Maybe game game length. Game length. Game length. Game length sounds incorrect, but we'll use it as a placeholder right now. If anybody has any suggestions, please let me know. Um, let me see. Uh, event table. So let's see. So luxury liner will def event table. At least. Let's do a D4. Let's do a D4. Because I do highly encourage people to create their own scenarios as well. It's just that a lot of people, especially if they're newer to role playing or new to, or have never like jammed or run a game before or facilitated it, I know that a lot of people would prefer to have ideas at least. Um, but let's say D4, D6, D8. I could do that. Let me go down here. 1d4, yeah, 1d4, and then um, this could be 1d6, and this is 1d8. I have now made this into an actual game. Like, it is no longer a full, like, tiny little one-sheet thing. This is going to be, I mean, I'll be able to burn through this pretty quickly, but, um, yeah. So let's move this slightly. Let us move the logo to the side. Let us keep just one of those. Actually, that one is still grouped, so let's get rid of that one. Okay, never mind. That could have been just as easy. Uh, let me. Don't know why I did that. They're literally identical. Um, but I need this to be much smaller. So we're gonna do premise and this is gonna have to be much much smaller that works 
because when you read it, it'll be about this big when you open things. And there is my headache. This is why I have an aspirin here. Uh, let's see if it just goes away on its own. I might need two pages for this because that is quite the block of text, but we shall see how small it has to get. Let's make this smaller and then, oops, <laughs> yikes. All right, so first off, we need this slightly less there because sometimes when you export PDF, it cuts off the edges a little bit. You have to work on the 24th. You weren't allowed to take vacation leave, Oh, I'm sorry. Well, luckily, at least you'll get to have uh, have a fun time uh, streaming for you the twenty fifth for me the, the or for you the time that you're streaming in for me slightly after. But yeah, that sucks. How much text is this cutting off? Oh, it's cutting off none. Okay, but I still want a little bit more. Oops, space with the lines because it's, it's just hard for me to read when stuff is too close together but this still works this still works I might make this more yeah I know that that's that's fine I'm just edit image um let's see what this can look like let's up the contrast for the background just because let's see and that's lower Saturation, so it's just black and white. It's a little bit easier to read. I won't get sued for that, right? This is fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not gonna get sued for that. It's fine. <clears throat> it's okay. Premise. I think this can go slightly higher. Oops. Hmm. Oh, actually, yeah, let me ungroup again because that has to be stretched. Go slightly higher up. What was the distance? Slightly higher yet. Okay. Now that can be grouped together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Speaking of work things, can I send you something for a company? For yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you can send me whatever. Uh, send it to me. Are you gonna send it to me on Twitter, or is it like a file? In which case, do you need me to tweet you my email address? Or you can use the public one, the contact the brand heroes at gmail.com. That's the public one. Gameplay so far. We'll be adding on to that, of course. Oh, let's just copy paste the whole thing. Copy. Okay, or we could do that. Um, go to the side. Okay, or you can just not do that, I guess. There we go. So, um, bigger, because this is not going to be nearly as big as the other things. Go down slightly. Okay. And then, again, I need these to be slightly further apart. Let me get rid of this, actually. And write gameplay here, too. Because I don't like the phrasing of you need no GM. You know what I mean? Ugh. Let's see. Choose a game links. Sometimes it's easier for me to work on games when I can go back and forth like this between the pretty document and the plain text. Because sometimes working in the pretty document, I can think of things that I otherwise didn't consider. Hmm. 
Yeah, there's no way to, f to mark any of that big, so I'm gonna down. Okay, I might make these all their own page because this is a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. Okay, that works. Alright. Nice. We'll see how that goes. Hmm. We might end up making the pre gen shit. Ugh, I always do that. I might end up making the pregens have like more of their own um, pages, depending on A, like how big this is, and, oop, hello, and how much I expand upon them, but we'll see. First, let's make this all a lot smaller, just to see how big, okay, so let's say, delete, let's say two people per page, maybe, or you know what? Fuck it. Let's straight up one person per thing. The pretty game book can have a lot more in it than, um, like more pages. That's okay. Oops. Hello. Just make that a little bit bigger. And now up. And then their stats will just go underneath that where there is currently nothing. The only problem with formatting things for the like a new or like writing original things in the pretty document is that when you try to copy paste this into a word document, oh, holy hell, um, fuck that shit. It's awful. It's really fucking annoying uh, because suddenly you copy paste this, you post it into that, and it is suddenly a uh, word size two hundred. Oh, this character is old. Yep, okay. The Y3K baddie. I'm in love with the Y3K baddie. I stand them. All right. I keep clicking the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm probably going to fill in their stats. And then what I do is like, if I have like filled something in for the first time in the pretty document, I enter it into the URL field, paste it uh, to like delete everything in here, paste it, copy it, and that takes out all the formatting. Um, and that is really the uh, easiest way to transfer shit. Okay, cool, I already did that. This is the copy. Although I have to say, I'm really curious to see somebody play the Stay Ready Scout because, frankly, I think that has, like, some of the biggest, like, comedic opportunity. Sci-Fi Betty living the best life. Stay Ready Scout. 
And then this font allows me to use italics. Perfect. Hmm. Gonna move this slightly for legibility. Yeah, that works. It's okay, nobody will notice, it's fine. Let's see. And then, let me see. This will be deleted because this is now a title page. Hmm, what did I say? Game lengths, types of play, mode of play, types of play. How do you fucking say that? How do you say that in English? I say that like I have, well, actually in German, I do actually have a term for it, but fucking not in English. Whatever. We will find a unified, like, version of this to play, uh, to say. To play. Oh my god. Oop. Um. Delete. We'll just move that. Just control X the fuck out of that. And then that'll be filled in later. Economy plus. Wait, did I already make a copy of that? Yeah, I did, okay. Randy, what if Stay Ready Scout silence is a magician? Ooh, that would be an extra layer of annoying, I'm not gonna lie. I'm here for it. Also didn't need to be called out as somebody who you know taught, taught themselves sleight of hand magic. Jesus Christ, you sure did send me something. Uh, I can't wait to watch this. So I'll watch the YouTube thing that you sent me, that you made um, <laughs> after the stream. <laughs> What a thumbnail that is that you just sent me. Jesus Christ. Let me see. Yeah, that thumbnail took me so far out of this, I forgot what I was fucking doing. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let me see. Okay, let me just copy paste all this because I'll just move it around. Wait, so I didn't copy that already, right? Yeah, I didn't. I copy pasted the wrong thing. <sighs> yeah, that's what I thought. <sighs> it's okay. This happens a lot when I'm doing this. <laughs> forgot this was the part where I'm expanding on them. It is fine. Easy fix. Alright, we're at 16 pages. Oh, yikes. God, this is gonna be really long, actually. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Let me run a spontaneous little game. It'll be just a small snuggle bug. Yeah, my ass, bitch. My ass. Did I even put my fucking name on the top of it? I did not, actually. Scroll all the way up. I didn't put my fucking name on this. Oops. 
What's the font? Libre Franklin? Okay. Sure, yeah, or we can spell my name like that. That's cool. Sick. There you go. I love that. This is probably my favorite game, like, title page of anything that I have ever made. It's great. Is wonderful. Also, instead of fucking guide, I should probably write pilot. I didn't say pilot for an astronaut, right? Space. Anybody can go nowadays. Speaking of, I'm going to astronaut pilot. Abandons them, the pilot. Motherfucker. Pilot. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so that's not for that. I do wish that there was like a search replace all in Canva. <laughs> That'd be fucking nice. Let's see, one week around the trip. Blah, 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 blah. You saved up for this trip through the Milky Way. Who's your pilot? I don't have to know how space things work. It's fine. Okay, again, please select only the word that I wanted. Pilot. Learning that if you double click on a word, it selects the word is the only thing I learned in computer science classes in university. The only thing, swear to God. I'm wondering, because I said jamless, it could also be GM Light if, in addition to the pilot, maybe you have a tour guide. You don't need to because everything about <laughs> you don't have a better thumbnail kept as it is. You don't need to because everything about this game screams very you. Thank you. A brandy ink brand. It's my brand. Brand it's my my brandy. Um Thank you very much. Uh let me see. I wonder if if maybe you should have a tour guide. If like one player plays as the tour guide that's also on the ship who just like is not an engineer is not an astronaut is just like dead ass a tour guide <gasps> could be an alien in the luxury liner one maybe the luxury liner has a tour guide the luxury liner has a tour guide i think that maybe yeah exactly you are we are on the same wavelength we are on the same wavelength Wow, I don't know how to write facilitator. I'm writing it like that, and um, nobody can stop me. Well, I mean, um, I actually hope that Google Documents will be able to stop me. Copy out of the URL. So you'll for sure have alien tour guide. Um, let me bold that so that I can remember that I need to make it a definition, which also means that after pregens or before pregens, write something called alien tour guide. Let me just write luxury liner so far. Actually, wait a second. All right, 
point to remember. So for sure, I think Alien Torgard for that. Yeah, I would definitely need people to steer the focus of the game. Um, for a mini series, I might might add that in. So I'll definitely design the Alien Tour Guide for long term campaign play, and then maybe make it optional to have or to include within an economy plus and an economy, because I don't think economy needs it at all. Economy definitely doesn't need it. So I actually, might make it just optional. Um, I mean, the cool thing is, if anybody does want to play a one-shot of this, but they think they would personally benefit from having Alien Tour Guide, and even if they're just playing Economy, they can. I don't care. Um, people can do what they want with these games. They're just for fun. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. I also, when I do make GMs for my games, I kind of like GMs being like part of the story. Like I like creating GMs where like the GM also has a backstory because I, A, I think it encourages people to move away from GM versus player and B, I think it creates a better avenue for storytelling, but I will go expand on that more when I talk when I do the the stream about doing GM versus GMless games, because there's also ways in between where you can make the GM seem like a part of the game, like part of the players. I just think that that's more fun than having a GM that has like nothing to do with the game except like that they're steering it. You know, it's not as personal, so I think it's less. I think it's a little bit less fun. Um, which is why I really liked when I got to GM as the game mother for Alien is because, like, I felt like I was a part of the game because I actually had a role in the game and I wasn't just some, like, faceless deity who was, like, talking and had no no interactions. But, like, I got to interact directly with the players and got to, like, react to them as well, which is really fun. So it became a lot more collaborative and a lot less uh, faceless entity who isn't actually there dictating uh, the universe, you know? Which, like, that can be fun, too, sure. I'll happily do that for people, but, like... Like, for Fax Nachma, that's what the GM in there is like. If you use the GM in Fax Nachma, it's just... Like, faceless person who's helping guide the game. But, like, I really like it when the GMs are integrated into the games. That's what I try to do, like, going forward. After Fax Nachma, that's what I try to do with all of my games. So that's why, like, the GM for uh, Forever 41 is fucking... Is your general manager who is, like, actively on the... Like, in the store with you and reacting to things and that is how things are presented i just think that it's more fun let's see got economy got the miniseries got long-term campaign okay well um this is a lot bigger than i thought it was gonna be but you know what that's okay because it's cool this is a cool game i can't believe this game didn't exist every time i i create a game and i get to like this point in creation where like it is fully outlined it just needs like to file down the mechanics of the game and like fill things out uh it's incredible to me to look at it and be like this morning this didn't exist didn't even exist in my brain this morning and that's just really fun that's just like the really really fun part about game design is so like you get to look at things be like holy shit i made this thing that did not exist beforehand let me see okay let me check the to-do list of what needs to be done for this game this needs to be filled out, which means I'm going to highlight all of this because that's how I uh, tell myself what needs to be. This is such a useful highlighted color, but I can't see the text that well if I do it like that. So I always need to go for like a paler route. Oh, it looks very Easter, actually. That's not, let's not do that color. I don't, oh, I didn't mean to underline that. I'm sorry. I just fucking slipped. Um, let's do green. Green works. Green is fine. 
It, it's because this, this way I'll see, like, okay, this is, like, a to-do thing that needs to be filled out so that I don't skip over it. And then what needs to also be done is... Modifiers for each character. Maybe a plus, just one plus modifier, maybe, for each of them. Now, like, of course, according to who's playing this game, you can change it as you would like to change it. Um, and then a little blurb, like, yeah. That's an equal sign, it's not what I wanted. Oops. All right. also means that here I would like to add a little to-do point of like backstory prompt questions. That's something that uh, I saw was really helpful that I added to Fahex Mahmoud is that even with the like pre-gens that are in that game, there are still questions you can answer for each of them. So like even if you decide to play Cookie, there's still questions of like, what does it look like when you wake up in the morning with your witch? What does it look like, uh, you know, what is a common thing you guys do together? Like, what, uh, what is something that like you do a lot, like as your like little cat self, you know, like what is your favorite X, Y, and Z? And that'll help people be able to make pre-gens their own. And especially for newbies, for RPGs, I think it's really helpful if they get to like use a pre-gen because it takes away a lot of the big scary part of like creating something from nothing, but they still get to ease into character creation because they have like, prompt questions they can answer to make the character more their own which I think also eases them into role play because this is then a character that they've personally helped create and it helps with the versatility of pregens because then a if you answer questions differently two people can be like the midwestern mom you can have totally different backstories and be totally different types of mom shit you could play a version of this where like we really piggyback off of that idea earlier and like everybody this is a group of midwestern moms I'm gonna write that down actually as a set adventure for one shot where did I write down? Where did I write down the part with like pre gen, quick starts, quick starts at adventures? Like one that's just a book club. Because a group of Midwestern moms is called a book club. Um. And that would be fucking hilarious to watch an actual play of, I think. Um, I think that would be great. I'd actually love to do facilitate and be in that. Um, that's a really good fucking idea, actually. I would fucking love that. So that'll be one of the quick start set adventures for this. Why is this game huge? <laughs> Why am I like this? Fuck. Oh, God. At least now maybe people will no longer have to ask me, how do you write games? How do you make these games? I Literally, I'm showing you because I couldn't explain it to you if I fucking tried. I don't know. I just do. It's just how my brain works. My, my brain all these years was optimized for something, and I never knew for what. It turns out my brain is optimized for game design and storytelling, um, and I just didn't realize that that's what it was. I was just like, is it optimized for TV? Kind of, but not entirely. Is it optimized for writing books? Kind of, but not entirely. This, this is what I'm optimized for. Creating actual plays and games. This is what my brain was made for. I don't know how to explain 
how this happens either. All I can hope is that you can watch this and understand it in a way that I can't explain. Um, God, this is a big-ass to-do list. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but so cool. Oh, that reminds me. This also needs to be highlighted green because this needs to be elaborated on more. Basically, here, let me put um, a light GM with act story options who facilitates that's how you spell that <laughs> i'll have to copy paste that into the pretty document when we fucking Ooh. actually i don't have to copy paste it i can just fucking delete that there we go an alien tour guide boom good great it's long-term gameplay and keeps momentum and the players on track. That's a great type of GM. A GM that is basically just an extra player on a, on a same side. Thank you. I do hope I got this. Um, the sun has fucking set but, uh, here entirely now. It is pitch fucking dark. It is 5 something p.m. It's like 5.40 something p.m. It is pitch black dark in here. I did not realize so I did not turn on a light. No wonder I got a fucking headache earlier. <laughs> I just drank more water and was like, well, it's fine. It'll go away, and it did go away, but like, ooh. Yeah, staring at a bright-ass screen with no glasses and no lights on is probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. Let me grab a light real quick. Grab a light, fucking turn it on is what I meant to say. Turn on the, ow, fucking cables. Turn on a light is what I meant to say. Right. See, it doesn't feel late though because oh wow, I stood up too quickly. It's a lot of dots I'm seeing. Ooh, pretty lights. Okay, interesting. Um, cool. We hate that. Haven't had that in ages. I think I stood up too quickly. Anyway, um, what was I saying? <laughs> What was I saying? Jesus Christ. It's all, oh yeah, it's a, it doesn't feel this late. Yes, I will I will eat soon. Um, we've already been on here for two hours, so I'm probably gonna cut it soon uh, for today uh, and keep working on the game after I make dinner. But I did not get out of bed until 1 p.m. because I had a narcolepsy thing this morning and slept for a good several hours longer than I anticipated sleeping. Um, but also to be fair, I was up till like three in the morning working on um, podcast stuff but yes thank you for hanging out please also eat and hydrate hey everybody gets like 10 xp if you fucking drink something right now please all right let's see let's do another once over of our progress today all right we started out with the premise premise is pretty nailed down i'm pretty satisfied with it i don't think i'll be changing it too much um stick in space comedy rpg i think i can let me see like a sci-fi comedy RPG RPG which the premise we will be adding on to this as time goes on to choose a game length which is let me well we'll be adding on to this so I'm not going to format anything because there's no point it'll be changing anyway there's three modes of play long-term campaign mini series and one shot Alien tour guide for luxury liner mode. There are pre
pregens, of which there are five, aka oh, the like sweet spot amount of players I suggested having. And any configuration of these works. So like if you just have these three, where it's some Miss for Mom, an old fart, and a baddie, that works. If you have an old fart, a baddie, and the sci-fi fan. If you have the Y2K fan, the Stay Ready Scout, and the sci-fi fan. Like all, all configurations of these, even if you're playing with like the minimum amount of players, which is like three that I had said, um, this all works. This all works perfectly. Just need to add a plus one. I'd say like a, let's do, let's make it a plus one modifier for each character, which also means that I need to make a success and failure table. Well, success and failure table for which I do recommend a D6, typically just because it gives you a little bit more wiggle room. And you'll be using a D6 anyway because I have that for, um, let me see, like one D4, one D6, one D8. So since we're using those anyway. 76. I might be able to copy paste the one that I made for. Oh no, I did I can't because there's no point. Ah, maybe. Maybe I'll copy paste the one that I used for uh vamp um Forever 41. Let me write that down. Let me make that bigger. Up two, it's 13. Perfect. 26. And then that is a, if you roll a one to two, three to, oops, three or four, then five or six. Yeah, that should work. Hmm, actually. I'm gonna do it like I did for Fahex Nochmai where only six is an absolute success. And the others are a complicated success. So let's say failure. Complicated success. Complicated successes are one of my favorite things in role playing. They're just so fun narratively. Absolute success. Let's see, All right, we've got that. Which also means that doesn't have to be highlighted anymore. Failure, success, success, and then elaborating on those just to explain them better so that people understand what that means. But it also means that this gets to be highlighted. Red, this gets to be highlighted. Yellow, let's do orange because that yellow really was hideous. An absolute success. We will highlight a little darker green so that it's still like, easy to read. We'll make it bold because I don't want anybody to have any trouble visibly reading this document. It's the whole point of this document. Mm, although I don't want to make this difficult for people who are colorblind to see. So let me just actually make, oh, didn't mean for it to go with a white background. I meant none. So let's leave it at none. It's fine. People can communicate what a failure and what a success means. It's probably easier this way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That's, that's what I fucking like. I love that shit. That also means that like the plus one can really help you bump out of a complicated success into an absolute success. But it also means that like there, but there's still even with a plus one modifier, which you can't use on every roll. Um, there's a lot of storytelling room, and there's a lot of room to fuck up. So like one, two, three, failure. Four, five. Come. Oh, actually, let me let me do one to two failure, and then three to five complicated success. Let me write absolute failure. Absolute should not have an E at the end. That is correct. In German, absolute does not have an E at the end because that's not how our language works. And I think it just looks better. It just looks better, but okay. Okay, English. I see you. I don't respect you, but I see you. 
Let me see, success and failure table. Actually, I won't, I won't make a page for that yet because we shall see where that goes. Or I'll make a page, but I'm not gonna put anything in it. That's the pregens. Let's choose the game length. I should probably move that. Nah, it's fine. Let's see, gameplay. Failure success table. I will add the text as I have it. Oops, not that. One D six. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. So then the next thing to do was to build out these. me. I need to remember to go grab the link to safety tools. Like I have in my other documents. All right, so we've been at this for almost two and a half hours. Uh, this is um, a nice little behind the scenes look into designing an RPG. It was originally a micro RPG, so the title was correct. But um, it has evolved. Um, it evolved past that. Now it's, it's just, let's just call it a TTRPG. Let's just call it, let's call it spade a spade. But also I'm gonna call it a day um, for this stream because I'm probably hungry and probably tired. So I'm going to step away from this for a bit uh, and make food. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Uh, I hope this is also very interesting to you guys to get to see how this stuff gets made. Um, I'm very excited. I'm also very excited just for this pretty document to be released because it's so fucking, it's so pretty. Look how pretty this bitch is. It is so pretty. I love it. I love it here. I love this little document. I think it's really funny. I think it's really cute. It's just, it's perfect. I can't wait. Um, can't wait for people to see this. Thank you. You take care also. Uh, text me about the weekend. Let me know, uh, exact date and time and i will be there and i will see you guys uh, again soon i will be streaming on uh the 24th probably as well as the 25th at some point probably in the mornings um if i am awake but yeah i'm going to log off for tonight thank you everybody for watching